Hello. So now we're going to discuss service and why service is one of the primary decision makers of anyone making a purchase and what you can do to upgrade the service that you offer. Hi, this is John Ruman. If we have not met before, I'm with the Sales Training Academy and with the real 007, Mr. Roger Moore. So thank you for checking out this live today. So what I want to do was go over, first of all, the five primary reasons or the five top reasons why people actually make a purchasing decision. These are not in any particular order and I did a video previously where I just went over them in general, but I'm just gonna rehash them and then we'll go deep into service. First is service, second price, quality, uh, quality of the product, confidence of the salesperson is number four, and then last would be the actual choices of the uh, customer and their ability to feel like they have um, that they have options versus being pigeonholed into a choice. So now I'm going to go into service. So, so here's why service is so important. First of all, many, many businesses are very short when it comes to the quality of what they offer, meaning they have nothing in place to take care of people before they become a client or customer or after. And if this is you, don't fret because there's always an opportunity to upgrade where you are because in life and business, improvement is the natural state. You should be constantly expanding and growing. So what I would invite for you is to ask yourself, what am I doing before a customer, uh, before I have a customer? So in other words, they're a prospect. If I have a store, they've entered my store. What do I do that makes them feel welcome? What do I do to the environment that makes it conducive for them to enter? And this starts, by the way, with the outside, with your physical sign. If uh, your, your driveway is clean, if you have a parking lot, if the parking lot is clean and easy to get to, and, and if you're in an area that may be dangerous, if it's secure. And these are just considerations that you need to look at from an outside. And then as you walk in, it's important that, for example, the window panes, if you have a glass door or glass uh, window, that the window is cleaned daily by your staff. And this is a, a there's no option but to do this because this is, um, you'll have a higher level of credibility with a clean environment and location than something that's dirty. Once they enter, it should be well lit it should have, it should be clean and organized and neat. It, they should be, feel like they're kind of naturally guided in a certain direction. So if you have a big store, you may have someone who welcomes people and asks them to help. If you have a small store, you still may have some sort of front desk person, but it's important that they feel again welcomed and that they're kind of taken through a journey and led and that they know people are there to take care of them. So whatever your company whether it be online or not, it's important to have this consideration. If it is online, you have a website, you may have a chat bot. Every website has to have some sort of journey. So if you have only an online organization or hopefully you have a website regardless, the website should take someone through a journey. So I would encourage you to get five to 10 people who really don't know the product or service that well and have them take, go through the website, maybe sit there behind them and, and, and watch them and hear the responses and feedback. Some areas are confusing because when you're in the business, things just don't have the level of confusion that they do when you're a third party. So let go the, through the experience with their eyes. Very important. And again, they should be going through some sort of journey and you should be guiding them through the journey. And okay, so let's go back to the physical proximity because many people have some sort of physical presence. Your staff should be welcome. They should be well represented in clothing. They should probably have a name tag. And they should have some sort of greeting that they say when people come in. And then help uh, be there to be of service to help the person buy. So there's maybe a few other things to do before the purchase. But that's one side. Post-purchase. And maybe during the purchase. But let's pretend you have an amazing uh, salesperson that takes care of the during process thing during sales thing and then the sale has happened what happens after that point and this is where a lot of people drop the ball in other words they don't take care of people post sale there's no process to take them through there's no onboarding as it's called and onboarding simply means 
steps that a client, a new client goes through so they understand your process, answers a lot of questions, make them feel very welcome. And basically you want to make it so it's conducive for them to come back and make them feel like they're part of something special. So this is the onboarding process post, and this can be partially done with a physical person calling them, walking them through things. It can also be done with an email marketing new uh, series of, of emails going out to them. But it's important you take them through this journey. And so, so that's in-house, before and after. So these are two important things. A third area is the phone. I'm assuming that people call and they have questions, they have challenges, they don't know how to work it, they need instructions, whatever it is, a phone call is an easier way or a Facebook or e sorry, website chatbot are also common ways for people to ask for help. So make sure you have a system in place for the website, for the Facebook and all these kinds of things, maybe Instagram or LinkedIn or YouTube. So people can have challenges and get them answered. And again, you want to make it as easy as them for as possible. So I would encourage you to have an FAQ section on your website, an FAQ section of your email response, so that people can, when they email you, get an automated response as to things they can do themselves without your input. Because people do like to be uh, easy, as easy as possible. So that, that's another nice one. Once you get comfortable with that, then it's important to create a, a good phone script as well, which is when people do call, how you welcome them, how you take them through challenges, how people answer certain things. I'll give you a small one. In Trinidad, they commonly say, no problem. I'm in Trinidad, the Southern Caribbean. And I kind of notice it's a regional thing, but here's the challenge with the word problem problem even though you say no in front of it psychologically and subtly is does not have that positive of a connotation so what people will do and, and, and high quality like four and five star establishments have realized that they'll say things like my pleasure I understand of course absolutely some sort of positive affirming thing as opposed to no problem which is just again it's a culture habit thing but what I've done is in sales training for example I've, for most of the classes assuming I remember I'll harp on that to a certain extent just because it really can subtly make someone feel less comfortable than if you say of course absolutely I'm there to help you what else can I do to be of service so that kind of language really helps if any of this resonates with you with the challenge of having quality service and such Roger Moore and I are actually in the process of right about to launch a customer service module or series of modules. And some will be focused purely on in-house. So physical proximity, people come in, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll have another module or modules on the phone, creating a phone script for the customer service team. So if this is of interest to you, shoot me a message on, again, Facebook, Instagram. I stream this all over the place. so. Any, wherever you see this, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. We'll, help, we'll be happy to help you and your team to upgrade your, your service because service is, again, one of the five reasons that people actually make the buying decision. And if your service is subpar, you will not do as well as you could. So this is an easy way to improve your numbers. And honestly, it makes everyone who's on the team happier because they're having a better time. Customers are more positive. And it can, you can actually create an environment where people feel this is where they work. So, so take the time to do that. Reach out to us. Look out soon. If you probably by the time you've seen this, you'll see the course is launched. And we would be more than happy to help you and your organization take care of this. Thank you. And please share this, like it, and ask any questions or feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Bye-bye.